Glad to see all our members who've been out of the way and they back to see us. Psalm 27 is where I'm going. Amen. Got a lot of members been out and sick and so forth. So I'm gone to school, come back to visit. I'm glad to see my niece. I was, I think I peeked over there and saw her. I'm glad to see her. Yeah. Let me see. Let's see. Is she over there? That's all. Um, Amen. I got two nieces, so I got one in college. So I'm glad to see her. Amen. Psalm 27 and 1, I'm going to read verses 1 through 5 as a spinoff from Psalm 23. This has been impressed on me to share with us today. I pray that the word of God will minister to somebody's need today. Hear, word, hear the word of God that comes from Psalm 27 verse 1 in King James translation of the Bible. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and failed. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Through the war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, yes. he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Yes. The Lord is my life, thank you, Jesus. And my salvation, whom shall I be? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? I want to talk about I ain't scared. I ain't scared. I ain't scared. I, I know that's bad grammar, but it's good theology. I ain't. I, I, you, you ought to tell the devil I ain't scared. I ain't scared. I ain't scared. I, ain't scared. I, ain't scared. I heard you. I ain't scared. I ain't scared. I am. And I ain't. Be scared. You be scared. Now there's some things that you should have been scared of. Yeah. If you ain't saved, you ought to be scared. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Be if you don't know him, you got a right to be it's scared. Yeah. If you don't have a relationship with the Lord, you have a right to be scared. Yeah. I'm talking about the saints of God, those who have a relationship with Jesus right. Christ. Those who have commonality of knowing Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you don't have to be scared. And then when I look at this passage in Psalm 27, it's important that we look at it in light of background where David is, is speaking from. He's speaking out. David, when you read the Psalms, many of the Psalms that David writes, David writes them out of his own experience. What David says, he's not just talking to be talking. David is talking from, from experience. And, and, and sometimes I, I found out in, in my 40 plus years of living that some things you just learn by experience. You know, there's some things you learn in a book. There's some things you learn from others' mistakes. But you know, there are some things you just have to learn by going through some things. There, some things I think ought to testify that some things in life will just teach you. that life will teach you. Yes. Psalms 27 was written against the background of trouble. Yes. Right. Written in the background of danger of, and many enemies. David had some folk who didn't like him. Yes. David, and I'm not just talking about Uriah's family. There's some other people that did not like David. David is probably responding in this text to either, either his flight from Saul, because Saul didn't like him, you know, because, you know, one day the, 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 the ladies came out with this, the band of ladies, and, 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 and ladies said, Saul has killed his thousands. And then they said, but David killed his ten thousands. And Saul said, wait a minute. Well, well, well. This is my show. Well, well. And he got upset, and Saul tried to have David killed. 
Yes, he did. It was either from his from Saul that he writes this, or his flight from his son Absalom, right. because yeah. Absalom was his blood. Yeah. But his blood tried to kill him. Yeah. All right, all right. And I think I'll drop this in here this morning. That you can have trouble from without and within. That's right. That's right. Sometimes you can have trouble in your own home. That's right. Can I get a witness in here? Sometimes trouble ain't outside the home. Sometimes it's right there where you live. That's right. You don't have to look far. Just look around the corner in your own house. And sometimes you'll find trouble in your house. It was truly a nerve-wracking and threatening time for David. For those who have lived life in, in relative safety and comfort and who have not known harrowing experience where your life or family or livelihood were in jeopardy, this song may not mean nothing to you. You may you had it good all your life and this may not mean a lot to you. Yeah. But I want you to get hold to it because if you, if you keep living, you may have to reach back. Yeah. <laughs> And grab hold yes. to this song. Yes. Can I get a witness in here? Yes. The purpose of this sermon is to give some reason as to why I'm not scared. Whether or not my attack is from without or within. Amen. I want to give you some reasons why you don't have to be scared. The text says in verse number one, the Lord is my light and my salvation. He asked the rhetorical question, whom shall I fear? He says, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? David seemed to always be in trouble somewhere. Always on the run. Just because he did what he did. Just because he was chosen by God. And God used him. He had to go through some things. And I think I ought to tell somebody here this morning. Come on, preacher who's going through some things. Sometimes God allows you to go through some things because he wants to demonstrate and manifest himself to you that he can bring you through what you're going through. Can I get a witness to you? And though some people can't go through what you're going through. Look around you. Everybody ain't going through what you're going through because they can't handle what you go always trying to kill him. Yeah. But while they were after this time, he said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. In fact, he said, God is my saving light. Yeah. And when you think of light, it's not just talking about a light in general. Yeah. He's saying that he's his light because light means guidance and direction. That's right. That God is saying that he will be your light and be your direction and your guide when you're going through things in your life. Because sometimes you don't understand why God has you where you are. You don't understand why God is taking you through what he's taking you through. But God is saying even though you're going through the valley of the shadow of death, you don't have to fear no evil because I am with you. My rod and my staff, they will comfort you. I will guide you. I will give you direction. If you just The Lord is my light and my salvation. Let darkness break in upon it. The darkness of night, the darkness of trouble, the darkness of spiritual conflict. Yet, God will be his light. If he's in him and he's in the light, there shines upon him a sun that does not and knows no eclipse, God will shine in your dark situation. And I'm a witness to that. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. His salvation in regard to everything and anybody who tries to oppress him and keep him down. God is saying to you, that even though people try to press you down on your job, at your home, in your family, in, at your school, wherever you are in the church, whoever tries to press you down, God says, I'm here. 
to raise you up. He said, if I, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? I ain't got to be scared. But the Lord is my light, my God, my salvation. Text says, with the wicked, even my enemies came upon me to eat my flesh. They stumbled and failed. Lord have mercy. You know, that's something, isn't it? When you see how he says, they came to eat up my flesh. Mm. He's not talking about literally that they came to eat up his flesh, but he likened his enemies to that animal, a wild beast, yes. that came to devour flesh. Because there are some people that just don't like you. I know that too. You ain't done nothing to nobody. You mind your own business. But let me tell you, there are just some folk who not gonna like you. Everybody's not gonna like you. In as much as I would like the people to everybody like me, but you know sometimes there are gonna be some people who just don't like me. Stop trying to please people. Who don't, who don't like you no way. You don't need. With money you don't have. To impress people you don't even like. You wouldn't have got that note. No, you can't afford it. So y'all went and bought that new outfit and left the tag on the inside to take it back. My foes came upon me to eat of my flesh. Look what happened. Bible says, my backbiters, my haters, stumbled, watch it, and failed. Watch that, it says, they stumbled and failed. Know what David says, they stumbled and failed. He did not say that I smoked them and they failed. He, not, he did not do anything to them, but they still failed. That's why I know as a child of God, you can do what you want to do to me. And since I'm going to tell you to stand still, when the haters and folks are trying to put you down, you stand back and let God work. It says, you don't have to be scared, number one, because God is our help. Yeah. Secondly, I try to tell you that God is not only our help, but he's also our hope. Yeah. Verse 3 says, Lord, host it and care against me. My heart shall not fear. I ain't scared because, Lord, war should rise against me. Even in this, in spite of this, I will be confident. Yeah. He says, oh, a host should encamp. Yeah. Or literally, a siege or a constant attack. And it seems like sometimes, I don't know about you, sometimes it looks like the devil just attacks me all. Sometimes, he, sometimes he'll do some thing, then leave and go on, thing, blessings come. But, but sometimes one thing after the other. Yeah. Hey, had one thing after the next. You, 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 you think you get past one thing and here comes something else. You think you get past something else and here comes something else. You think you get past that and something else. Comes. Every time you turn around. But they didn't say, it's all whole and camp against me. Oh, the enemy comes against me. He says, still in this. He says, notice the text. He said, my heart shall not fear. What he's meaning there, brothers and sisters, let's not hold you too long. Is that my 
heart, my spirit will not break. And I'm trying to tell you that the enemy will try to break your spirit. And you're on a high because the Lord is blessing you. And you're in a place where God wants you to be. And you're in a place of blessing. But the enemy comes to break your spirit. Have you ever been on your job and things going good? Glad to go to work. Glad you got that job. Been praying for that job. And soon as you get there, a few days later, somebody comes by and tries to break your spirit. Have a wonderful time in church. Praising the Lord and the Lord is blessing you. But somebody will come by and say, oh, you ain't nothing. You, you just go to church too much. Mm. Try to break your spirit. David says, in all this, I'll still be confident. Yeah. Yeah. He said, literally, now, but he's trying to tell that he's going to trust the Lord. Yeah. In all of this, he's learned how to be confident. Yeah. And I think you all to do just what David does. Trust the Lord. Yeah. Trust the Lord. Yeah. In fact, yeah. Yeah. his son told us, trust in the Lord. With all thy heart, heart. lean not to thine own understanding. Yes. In all thy ways, yes. acknowledge him. Yes. And the word said that he shall direct thy path. Yes. You got to watch how you try to get it, folk. Yes. They'll stumble and fall. Yes. Even in the Gospel of John, Gospel of John chapter 18, when Jesus had been betrayed by Judas, yes, sir. Judas is carried. And he came with his boys to get Jesus. Jesus met him. Said to them around about verse 4, chapter 18. Then Jesus, knowing everything that was about to happen to him, went out and said to them, Who is it that you're looking for? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am he. Yes, Judas was around there, standing with them other boys. Okay. So when he said to them, watch this, when Jesus told them, oh, I'm he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Mm -hmm. They thought they were tough. But when they got face to face with this, how folk would do you. They'll talk about you behind your back. They'll talk about you when you don't see them. And when you get in their faces, they don't have nothing to say. They just start backing up. Can I get a witness in here? And that's how the enemy will do. He'll do a lot of talking. But he will back up. Because when you're standing in the power of God, and in the power of the Lord's might, you'll find the enemies backing up. But not only that in text, not only am I scared because of my hope and my help that's in God, but I also find that there is, there is a hiding place. Well, well, well. Because the Bible says, one thing have I desired. One thing I desired of the Lord. And he says that it's that that I'm going to look at. I'm going to seek that. Yeah. And that is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Yeah. No text says all the days yeah. of my life. Yeah. He says as long as I live. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be in the presence of God. Yeah. Yeah. Now David was saying that he would dwell in the Lord's house. Yeah. Well, because well. in Jerusalem, the house of God represented the presence of God. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. But know that Jesus said in John chapter 4 that it doesn't matter if you worship in the mountains well. or worship in Jerusalem. Yeah. He said God is a spirit yes, sir. and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So all I'm trying to tell somebody is if you really mean business with God, it does not matter 